Hello friends, how are we all doing? It is time for the next episode of Wrapped Up. I'm feeling a bit nervous because I pre-filmed the past two months of unwrapping the books and finding out what I was gonna be reading because I went to Wales and it didn't make sense to take all these books and me to unwrap two books. But that means I haven't done this whole shebang for a hot minute, you know what I mean? <laughs> so today, we're gonna be unwrapping a book and we're gonna be reading it. If you know Wrapped Up Retro, these are the oldest books on my TBR. These are the oldest books, the books I've owned the longest, and we're gonna unwrap one and read one and see, should it have taken me this long to read it? Now, well, yes. now today, I think I'm feeling a hardback. I'm drawn to either the bottom one on this stack or the bottom one on this stack. You couldn't tell which ones I was pointing at. Um, I feel so sick. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with this one. I just have to make a decision. Please don't. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> right, let's unwrap it. Oh my god, I'm nervous. No, we're fine. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. What are we gonna be reading in today's video? Oh, interesting. Okay, I've seen what it is. This is She Who Became the Sun by Shirley Parker Chan, which is a fancy release. I got, I think I like, maybe even pre-ordered this. I got this very soon after it came out. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know a ton about it. I haven't had a ton of people speak about it. I think this is a duology. It's definitely a series. I'm not sure if it's like a duology or a trilogy, but I have heard good things from people who have read it. I just don't know if I'm the mood for this kind of high fantasy, but I guess we're gonna find out. Can she outwit her destiny and rise as high as she can dream? In a famine-stricken village on a dusty yellow plain, a seer shows two children their fates, for the boy greatness, for the girl nothingness. It's set in 1345, China lies under harsh Mongol rule, for the starving peasants of the central plains greatness is only found in stories. Da -da -da -da. I don't wanna read much more. I think we're just gonna go into this blind. But yeah, I, I have heard good things about this. This is an interesting one. You know, this is one of those books that I did buy. Some of the books we've had have been books like either I got as arcs when I hadn't been as interested in them and like someone offered me them and I was like, oh my God, free book. We've had that. We've had books from when I really just started my channel and was kind of trying to figure out my reading taste. I would say this is from a period when I knew my reading taste fairly well. And so I'm excited to see did I know my reading taste well? I'm excited to read this one. I think this is gonna be a good one to pick up. So I will make a start on it and let you know when I'm a little bit of the ways through. everyone so it's been a while because i filmed the unwrapping of a book before i filmed that month's tbr cluedo so i can incorporate that book into tbr cluedo if needed so it's been a while since i unwrapped this and over the weekend i have read the first 140 pages i'm using the dust jacket as a bookmark 140 pages of this book i've fallen asleep twice whilst reading it mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, 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 no. There's no way. No. I'm bored. I'm bored, I'm bored. Let me tell you the plot first. So we're following Zoo, who is a young girl who sees her brother get this prophecy that says he is gonna be destined for greatness and she is gonna be destined for nothing. But then one day her dad and brother pass away and she uh, consumes the identity of her brother and goes to live as a monk. We're also following Oh Yang, who is the kind of right-hand man to um, a, an army general. We haven't followed a lot of his story yet, only a little bit, we've mostly been following Zhu. And um, <laughs> this has been pitched as a Mulan retelling and a Son of Achilles kind of inspired book. There have been the comp titles of this. And I just don't know if I'm feeling it. My number one issue so far is I can't picture it. That is always, oh, the biggest um, hindrance to me towards a book. If I can't envisage what's going on in my brain, 
it, that's a problem, right? I can't picture scenes, I can't picture characters. I'm getting like, I'm having to really like triple check which characters are what. Like, is Ong Yang the general or the general's friend? Like, I got that confused for ages. I was like, who are these people? Or I was getting like the sides of the wall confused. Everything just feels a little bit muddled for me in this. And like I said, I've fallen asleep twice. Oh my God, just talking about it is making me want to yawn. Ah! Bored shitless! I just feel like for some reason it's not really doing it for me. I can see that the writing, particularly for a debut, is very, very accomplished. I can see that this is a very interesting historical fantasy with a lot of political machinations that I would usually enjoy. But there's just something about it I'm really, really not connecting with. There's moments where Shu feels like a very interesting main character with a lot of like when we see her with friends and with comrades and with peers there's a very interesting kind of joy there and zest for life that I really enjoy but it seems like every other moment she's consumed with this desire for greatness and to achieve something and to prove something to fate and to achieve uh, like I, I, it, <laughs> but it feels like it's come out of nowhere it feels like the author just gone oh yeah she really is obsessed with greatness but I don't feel like it's coming from her core I feel like you know when something is transposed over a character like this is the motivations the author wants this character to have versus feeling like like it's earned and natural. It doesn't feel natural. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. And I feel like this story from what I've heard that may continue and grow as a part of her character. And I just don't know if it's something I'm interested in. I'm just being very uninvested in this, but I have heard some good things. I've heard some not good things, but I have heard some really good things about it, particularly the way that this ends, like the latter third. So I do want to continue on. It kind of feels similar to the poppy wall for me. And not just because it's an Asian inspired fantasy. I don't want it to seem like that's the only reason I'm comparing them, but we've got this main character who's come from poverty, who goes to this kind of inner sanctum of like a safe place where they grow as a person and they end up in this war. And it's perhaps a story of them growing into like some kind of pow person with power that perhaps abuses that power. It just feels like it's following some of the plot beats, but not in as good a way. And that always does bother me when I read a book that really reminds me of another book, but just doesn't feel as successful for me personally. So yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna persevere. I want to continue. I want to finish this book and give it a go. I'm just gonna try and read as much of it this evening as I can. But there is just something about it I am not personally connecting with. And I don't know what it is. Anyways, hopefully I'll see you again this evening. I'm gonna read a bit more and hopefully I'll see you before I go to bed with my thoughts. Okay guys, I'm so sorry. I've got a DNF this. No. What? No. I'm on page 220. So I'm over halfway through. I just can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. And I hate DNFing. You guys know what I hate DNFing. I am just like completely 100% detached from the story that now no matter how good it gets, it can't win me back. It can't do anything. And I don't want to DF because I have, I feel like I have been reading this forever. I feel like I've invested so much time in it. That's why I hate DNFing, but I hated it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm just, I'm so over it. I just had it oh I can't take anymore. I really did not enjoy a single aspect of this book. I'm so sorry. And I think some of it must be me. But I just felt like both characters' motivations made zero sense. Both our main character motivations, I didn't feel like there was any real justification for. It's also split timeline, which we know is not my favourite thing. And it's not 50-50, it's like 70-30. And that meant I really didn't care for the dude's timeline. Because, like, he's barely in it. And, like, we just drop in and I he's... Uh, <sighs> it's so, so bored. There's so many characters. I felt completely lost throughout the whole thing. I didn't understand the point of what I was reading. Guys, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say to you. I don't want to like dunk on this because I don't think it's a bad book. Like I think a lot of people really enjoyed this. I think the examinations of gender and like gender identity in it are very interesting. There are a lot of plus points, but just as a narrative, I was checked out. I was completely, utterly checked out. Like not interested. <laughs> not interested one bit in this. So yeah, we're going to DNF it. And here's the thing. 
I've got some really big books I have to read this week for the vlog coming this weekend. And so I was like, oh, do I just end the video here or do I unwrap another book? But then you can unwrap another book and you can spend ages reading it. So what I'm gonna allow myself to do is unwrap a book that I was never probably gonna unwrap because I know what it is. And that's because it's this short tiny book that would never be long enough for a wrapped up retro vlog of its own. But I figured would be a good one to throw in here at the end because this is the kind of book I don't know when I'm ever gonna read, if not now. Like I could, it's one of the oldest books on my TBR, obviously all these books are <laughs> because they're unwrapped up retro. But I honestly don't know when I would read this. So this book, I know what it is because it's the only book that's this tiny. It is Essex Girls by Sarah Perry. My aunt got this to me once because I am an Essex girl. I wasn't born here, but I have lived in Essex like my whole life. And I think it's just kind of like a short novella, like a feminist defense of like the Essex girl. Like, listen, my, my, my love Gemma Collins is, you know, an Essex girl. I'm a massive fan of the dictionary. You know, we should be like promoting the dictionary anyway because like it is such an amazing like historical British thing, isn't it? So I'm gonna read this. It's so, it's like tiny. It's like, I mean, how many pages is this? 80 pages? I'm gonna go ahead and read this and I'll check with you in the morning on my thoughts of it. Cause I think this will be a good one to just tick off my TBR and like get out of the way. So yeah, I'm sad that I, you know, invested hours of my life on this and I don't even get to add it to my reading spreadsheet cause I don't add to <laughs> on my reading spreadsheet. I really, I'm so sorry. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I was so, so checked out and I'm really sad because obviously I was so excited for this. I got the hardcover. I think I got it right after it came out. Like I should have loved that. Anyways, I'm going to read Essex Girls tonight slash tomorrow morning and I'll let you know what I think. I think it's going to be an interesting one, but oh my God, another nonfiction guys. She is the number one nonfiction reader. <laughs> Good morning, friends. I finished Essex Girls. It's probably gonna take me like 40 minutes, 50 minutes to read. And um, unfortunately, this was not much more successful than she became a son. At least it was quicker. It fucking stinks. It stinks. I think this is very unsuccessful as a nonfiction. There, I said it, I said it. I'm gonna give this two stars. This book sets out to be like a defense, a feminist defense of the idea of the Essex girl, which if you're not from the UK, you may not know, but they're kind of viewed as dumb, promiscuous, um, uneducated, boisterous, rude, is kind of like, but particularly like promiscuous, like, and dumb. I would say blonde, but not naturally blonde. Like there's that kind of, there's a, there's a stereotype of an Essex girl. And this seeks to be a defense of that. And it's so stupid <laughs> because like, there, I think there's more non-Essex girls in this than there are Essex girls. Should give like an example of like Boudicca, right? Boudicca, like, if you don't know, it's Boudicca. Boom, boom. Anyone remember the Horrible History song? No? She, I think like did something to Chelmsford or Colchester, Colchester, Colchester. I don't know, anyways. But she'll give examples of a few women born in Essex, right? Like Gemma Collins, right? She gives the example of Gemma Collins. But then she's like, Kim Kardashian is the exemplification of an Essex girl. And I'm like, wait, what? And she's like, this woman, she may have lived in Norfolk and been in Norfolk and never come to Essex. Or this woman from Cornwall. And it's just these random women who did these things throughout history that she thinks exemplifies being an Essex girl, but doesn't. It's like a woman who was like a feminist. <laughs> she's like, that's an Essex girl. <laughs> there is more non-Essex girls given as examples in this than Essex girls. And it's, this isn't me being like, false representation for Essex girls, where's the representation? Because like, who cares? But your book, as a non-fiction book, has to have a focus. It has to have an aim. It has to have something it's like setting out to do. And this just fails <laughs> on the front. Like, if I'd written this as an essay at uni, they'd be like, um... <sighs> Kim Kardashian is an Essex girl. Like, what the fuck is this even talking about? <laughs> oh, it was just very unsuccessful. It was, you know, as a piece of nonfiction, it set out to do a certain thing and it absolutely did not achieve it. There's not much to say because it's like super short. I do own The Essex Serpent by this author. I don't know. Fiction and nonfiction are very different, but I don't really understand why this exists. Like, I don't really understand the point. <laughs> Of it. And I don't feel like I learned anything. I don't, I feel like this is a whole lot of word salad. Like I really don't feel like this said a single thing. 
but it's been on my TBR for God knows how long and I've read it and I finished it. So this vlog was a little bit cursed <laughs> with a DNF and a two star, but I am glad that, you know, both these books, I now know what I think of them. I think this vlog is exemplification of books that I have not read for so long because of a, of a reason. You know, I think I was perhaps sensing that these weren't for me and in denial, because that is me. I, I don't like letting go of books <laughs> without reading them. So I think there was perhaps somewhat of me with both of these sensing that I was no longer super interested in them, but no longer being able to let them go. But that is, that is not the case. We can <laughs> let them go now. So I hope this vlog was interesting for you guys anyway, but yeah, not the most successful wrapped up retro, but that is kind of the point of this series of wrapped up retro is seeing why have I not read these books for so long? Is there a reason? We've had some super successes. We've had a, we've had multiple five stars. We've had at least one five star in this season. I can't really remember all <laughs> books I've read previously, but we've had some successes, but we've had some low, low ones, like Uprooted, my only one star of the year was a wrapped up retro book. So yes, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought if you've read either of these. I think there'll be loads of you who really enjoyed She Who Became the Sun, and I think you're valid in that. There was just something with me in this book, I could not do it anymore. And I very rarely get that, I very rarely DNF, but it wasn't even that I hated it, it was that I, w I was not following what was happening. So anyways, I'll see you guys very soon in another video, and I hope you have a good week. Until then, bye!